so I'm going to tell you about what just happened to me. And hopefully in the end, there is a lesson somewhere. So I got locked in my bedroom, right? The door, let me see if I can flip. So the door, you can see now it's done, right? So the door, like this part of the door was jammed in here. Okay. I'll show you the door. So eventually, so... <laughs> I mean, there you can see that it eventually we cut it off. Okay. So, oh, here we go. Okay, so now I'm stuck in the bedroom, right? But I'm okay because I have a bathroom and I'm like, okay, that's fine. But obviously I don't have food. And um, so, oh my gosh, now we need to actually try. And, so we try different things, right? I get a screwdriver and I try like cupping the thing out. It doesn't want to work. Then I tried... Then I tried knocking out the hinges, okay? I'm not strong enough. I mean, it, it did knock out very little. I don't know if you can see. Can you see, like, very little. And even this one is better. That top one was worse. See? So, then to knock out those hinges. And then that didn't work. And then eventually what we did was, then I was like, no, the only way I'm going to get through this thing is I'm going to need to cut it. But I don't have anything that cuts through um, steel. Meanwhile... I actually do have something that cuts through steel. I have an ang grinder. So um, they get the ang grinder to me through the window, right? Um, now, so I mean, I have an ang grinder, but I've never used it, okay? Everything else I use, but that I haven't used. So I take it and I'm like, okay, is it going to create sparks? Is it? So now, because I know that it's going to create sparks, I actually get, like, it makes me scared, right? Um, so like I put on long pants, put on a hoodie even, you know, trying to cover every part of myself. Then I try with this angle grinder and the sparks come and they hit me, guys, and they burnt me. Like it was sore, like legit sore. Anyway, so then I go and I get like a buff and, you know, try and cover myself up some more so that if these sparks fly, um, <laughs> you know, I'm actually able to get out. And my mom is eventually like, Katie, between you and the door, I choose you. You know, let's just break down the door and then you know we'll just get a new door and i'm like no it's fine anyway so here i'm going at this door thing now right with the ang riders but like because actually what i wanted to do was i wanted to close my eyes but i couldn't close my eyes because i needed to see what was happening i mean if a spark was coming or you know i don't know i i just i've never used the machinery right so i needed to see what was happening anyway so then so eventually, I go and get a flashlight to look and see, you know, is this thing even working? Oh, no, first, Matthews comes and he's like, no, I can hear you're doing it wrong, okay? So this is how you need to do it. You need to stand far back from it. You need to start, it, you know, like before you actually get to the thing and then move towards it and, you know, like cut it from the front, not lean on it and push it. Otherwise, you're going to break the disc. So I should probably show you what an angle grinder is, hey, for those that have no idea, okay? So, I mean, I also, there we go. So, this, this is an angle grinder. Um, I'm very sure another part of the lesson. So, I actually, I went and I bought these discs, um, like, long ago, right? When I got the angle grinder, I was like, oh, I need to make sure that I have. And, like I said, I've never used it. But, lo and behold, today, suddenly, I'm so grateful for these angle, these discs that I went to go and... Um, to buy right because now i had them for when i actually needed them yeah okay i'm getting many lessons it's okay okay cool anyway so then i get a flashlight to go and look and see because my mom's like look let's just stop let's just ruin let's just break the door because this thing is injuring me <laughs> anyway so i get a flashlight and then i see that I, oh i'm actually almost there like there's such a little piece of this thing left and i think i have to go like maybe two or three times again and then the door just popped open and there it was. And then we, we were able to remove those things, you know, like handle out of the door and stuff. And I remember, so this morning, as soon as I realized I couldn't get out, the first thing I said, I was like, look, mom, can you please bring me my laptop and stuff? Because I had meetings, right? So I was able to do my meetings. I was able to talk to people, you know, in my room still. Like everything was still fine. Nobody was, or let me say work-wise, I wasn't inconvenienced. Um... Which makes it easy to think, oh, okay, well, then I'm not really in a prison or I'm actually okay because I'm still able to do everything. Everything that still needs to get done, I'm still able to do, right? Um, 
which I think is such a dangerous place for us to be like spiritually, right? Because when we, we, we think, okay, well, I'm still able to do everything I'm supposed to do. So it means I'm actually fine. Um, but actually like you're locked in, you know what I mean? You're limited, you're restricted to this area. I mean, just coming to the door, like, um, <laughs> and I know people, you know, it's so easy to go, God opens doors that no, uh, God will open doors and no man will shut them and whatever he shuts, no man can open. And it's so easy to kind of just run into scripture. But I think we also have to be conscious of what it is that scripture is saying, right? The words that scripture is using, what the message that scripture is actually portraying. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I think, I mean, I have a few takeaways, right? I love the fact that there were many different options available. Um, even though none of them worked, at least we tried, right? Um, and I think that kind of just speaks to me. So a lot, like, especially recently, God has been speaking to me or Holy Spirit and I have just been chatting around, you know, now there's been this big push for human beings that people think that doing is not necessary necessary anymore but like we have to do right you can't just say oh god made me a human being not a human doing and then expect that there should be no um doing like literally the first thing god said to adam or you know no okay yeah no let me not let me not jump so actually let me go and find it um but you know even in the i mean in the when god cursed man he was saying look work the work the soil you know what i mean um in his blessing to adam and eve when he said be fruitful and multiply that to be fruitful and multiply guys you're doing something there you know what i mean you're not <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're not um you're <laughs> you're not just being a human being I uh, mean, God made owners. Yeah. So the first thing God said to man was, "Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth." Okay, that requires work, guys. That is effort and energy from us. Anyway, so to get back to the point, I love the fact that there were different things. Um, like with the hinges, it would have worked, but I wasn't strong enough, right? And it's okay for us to get to a point where we're like, look, you know, I understand we've been trying this way, but I'm not strong enough. Like, oh, this is going to take too long. Because like you saw, it probably would have worked, but it would have taken me all day, right? Um, then when the ale grinder came in, what I loved about it is I, I mean, so first of all, there was some type of preparation that happened in the back because like I said, I had the machinery and I had the discs, but I had never used it, you know, in learning how to use it. I burned myself. I hurt myself. It caused me pain. It made me scared, but I still did it anyway. And at the moment when other people around me felt like, look, it's enough. Let's rather just give up. Um, I, it, I was great. I was, you know, I will now want to say, um, grace allowed me to see that I'm almost there so I could persevere. And then eventually it popped off. And when the door eventually did open, it didn't open because I was exerting any force on the door, but because I was using the elements of the door to help and get me out. Right. And now here the door stands, it obviously has to be replaced. Um, you know, which is much easier that I'm used to doing. Uh, but I think it's just been, it's such a, it's been a great um, kind of like, it's it's been great insight into how we sometimes are, first of all, oblivious to the limitations of how we are moving in the spirit or with Jesus. And second of all, um, just the journey to freedom for me has has been like amazing. And the Really, I can tell you the one thing that stands out the most for me is this whole thing of I was using something that was mine. So I had prepared, you know, ahead for it. Um, and now in learning to use it, it still caused me pain. Um, you know, it still hurt me. I think that's something that I'll probably take. Um, yeah, take with me. For I mean, I'm still chewing on it, obviously, because like this literally just happened, right? Um, so maybe I'll... <laughs> Maybe there'll be a video later that makes more sense um, of the lessons that I've learned. But I'm free. I'm free where the spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, the one thing I also wanted to say was on the other side, as I was busy injuring myself there, it was really comforting to know that my mom was on the other side praying for me throughout the whole thing. So, yeah. Okay. Have a good one.